We're doing a series, and the series is on the gifts that God has. We have a kind God. Amen. He's very generous. Yes. And if there's anything good in your life, it's because of God's goodness. Yes. Because the Bible says in the book of James that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so because we have a kind God and a generous God and a God who wants to give us gifts, not just for us, but that he can work through us to a lost world. He's a God that says, I have these things for you, and I want you to seek me, because his gifts are not over here, and God is over here. His gifts are one and the same. They are part of his nature. And so we are discovering, receiving, and exercising our God-given gifts. Now, this week, we're going to focus on the message title called, A Body in Motion. Amen. Okay, A Body in Motion. Now, I'll show you a person that I'm never going to look, as, look like. He's a lot stronger than me. Okay? I have given up the notion of ever looking like that. But that's okay. Thank you for your sympathy, sister. And I have also come to the conclusion that I'm never going to be able to do this. Come on now. We're not talking about that. I'd have to have a car to keep up with that. <laughs> but to run 26 miles, that's not going to happen with this body. But one thing I can do is get a friend and do a power walk. Amen. Or maybe it's a job. Here's the point. Sometimes we go through life and we just think about what we're not. Or we say, oh God, I don't have that gift. And I don't know, I can't do what they can do. Don't ask yourself, why can't I have this? Or why don't I have this? Ask yourself, what do I have? What has God given me? What does God want me to have? That's the question. Because if you just look around and compare yourself to other people, then you're going to be depressed. Amen. So, God has some gifts for us, but we have to have the right spirit. Amen. Now, we're going to take a look at what the Bible has to say about God's wonderful gifts and this body in motion. All right, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Now, some of the verses we read last week, but this is such a good uh, section of Scripture. I'd like to ask you to all stand. Maybe it's a little bit harder to see the screen, but you'll be all right. I'll read one verse, and then you read verse 2, I'll read verse 3, you read verse 4. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, I'll read verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to possess and approve of God's will is, is good, easy, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesied, let him be in the relationship with his face. If it is a good servant, let him serve. If it is teaching, teaching let him teach. And altogether on verse 8, if it is a courage, let him be courage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him do it generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. 
Can you say amen to the reading of the Word of God? Amen. You may be seated. Okay? Today I'm going to give you some exercises. Exercises that we can do to understand and receive the gifts of God. Someone told me something about health that I've always remembered. A healthy person keeps moving. Amen. I mean, isn't that simple? But think of it. When you start to decline is when you have to stay still and you're not moving at all. If you have a, an arm that is paralyzed and it's not moving, what happens after a while if you never move that arm? It shrivels up. We call it atrophy. So what I want to talk to you about today is this thought. Okay? Just keep moving. Amen. Can you say it with me? Just keep moving. You want to have health in your spiritual life with God, then don't give up. Amen. Don't get atrophy, but just keep moving. Now, how do we do that? The first thing we want to do is make sure that we keep dedicated to Jesus Christ. Amen. You're not going to help your fellow brothers and sisters if you slack off from your relationship with God. Amen. Stay close. Keep dedicated. Have you ever uh, sat on a couch or you know sat in a certain position and you get up and your whole leg is asleep? You know? yeah. It's like, oh, you yeah. got to just shake it out. No, because it's just. Well, we don't want to be that part of the body where it's like I'm, I'm asleep. Well, if we are, we we'll just shake it out, and get ourselves back. And what does it mean to keep committed? Well, the Bible tells us that. Be a living sacrifice. <clears throat> Jesus gave it up. He gave it all. Amen. And the least we can do from what He's given to us is say, God, I'm yours. Amen. I'm a living sacrifice. Yes, Lord. And that means that we dare to be different. A living sacrifice for Jesus isn't going to look the same as everybody else in the world. Amen. We're going to be different. We are people that delight in doing what's good. Amen. We're people that want to have our minds on Jesus. As someone said, well, you Christians are brainwashed. Well, Amen. yes, I want to have my brains washed. Amen. Exactly. Amen. I want that. Amen. 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 Dare to be different. We want to honor Jesus. Amen. You know, the, Jesus is in this country. Um, he's conspicuous by his absence. You, you know what I'm saying by that? It's like Jesus is here, but we're doing our best in our nation to just kind of like keep him out of the picture. <clears throat> what if you went to a birthday party? Everybody was having a good time and, you know, just celebrating. But the person whose birthday it was was never there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of strange? Yeah. It's sort of like that. You know, Jesus is here in America, even if he's conspicuous by his absence. But we know he's not absent. And so God has called us to live different, and that involves the transformation of our mind, the renewing of our mind. Amen. This is the word, you know, from the caterpillar, from the cocoon to the caterpillar. Yes. So we choose to break out of cocoon living, living in the dark, Amen. and we choose to yes. be what Jesus wants us to be. Yes. So keep dedicated. Keep moving. Now, the next thing that, or exercise that we are to do as people of God, to Amen. be open to the gifts of His Spirit, Amen is to welcome diversity. Mm -hmm. Welcome diversity. Amen. We have to recognize differences as good. That's right. Have you ever noticed, uh, I, I've seen this like in North Korea. I haven't been there, but I've seen this. When you see pictures of the army, <clears throat> they are pictures that make you think that everybody in the country looks exactly alike. They'll show pictures of the army, and the army will be all dressed exactly alike, all in this long line, and you see like acres and acres of soldiers, but they're all just one little cog in a big wheel. You understand what I'm saying? 
There's that uniformity. Well, God has not called us to all wear the same uniform. Right. He's called a people that are diverse. Our God is a creative God. Our God is a God who loves variety. That's right. That's right. That's right. If someone were to come up to you and say, what does an American look like? <laughs> you can't really show a person a picture of one person, this is what an American looks like. Amen. Right. Yes, Lord. It used to be in America that we have the expression, you know, the United States is a melting pot. Well, I think that people got it right later on when they said America is more like a salad bowl. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. 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 Salad you know, what would a salad be if it's just all cucumbers? <laughs> that wouldn't really be much of a salad. Or all carrots or all lettuce. What makes it a salad is yeah, the, the beauty of everything coming together, but yet separate. Yes. And so when it comes to diversity, we need to recognize diversity, but realizing that there's more to diversity than just difference. Yes. Now, the, the, the word diversity has kind of been hijacked by many people to mean, well, it doesn't matter what you believe. You know, it's, if you, it doesn't matter if, if you, you know, for instance, in the church, diversity is never meant to mean, hey, if you um, if you want to lie, that's okay. You know, hey, we're diverse. You know, we, we just don't think lying is good. But or hey, if you want to have you know your own way of expressing your sexuality, well, that's fine. We're diverse here. You know, we just believe you know Bible. But if you're you're okay with that, that's fine. You understand what we're saying? Yeah. Diversity is not uh, taking the Bible and throwing it out the window. Diversity is expressing our differences in the body through the wonder of Jesus. So we're a diverse group. And just like our body is diverse. What a monstrosity I would be up here if I were just all an eye. Right? Wouldn't that be frightening? You wouldn't come and you would just be eyes. You know, maybe stuck on the wall. <laughs> 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 that <would be> scary. <laughs> but the body is made up of many members. Amen. So my little mouth, maybe big mouth for some, but can speak and my hands can move while talking and my eyes can look at you. Many, many members, diverse members of the body. So we want to recognize our members. Amen. And value every person that comes into the body. Amen. You know, I like to go to the gym. I meet interesting people at the gym. And um, some of the things that I see in the gym, especially with men, you know what men focus on from the gym? <laughs> I'll tell you. Three things. They focus on strengthening their arms, shoulders, and what else was it? Chest. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Arms, shoulders, and chest. Why? Because those are the most noticeable. Right? You know, I know a guy who focused on these things, but he had problems with his lungs. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't work out anymore. What I'm telling you is that it's not just the visible parts of the body that are important. Amen. It's also parts that you can't see. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in a church that do a lot of smaller things that are not seen That's right. are just as important yes. as looking at, wow, look at those arms. Yeah. No. We all have a part in the body of Christ. Right. We have to have lungs. <coughs> so, value every person. Just because a person is not an extrovert doesn't mean they're not important. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are quiet and get a lot of things done. Right? Yes, thank you, Lord. All right. Not only do we recognize diversity, but we celebrate our unity. I'm so glad that my eyes are attached to my head. <laughs> I'm so 
glad that I have hands and I can have feet to walk. Because we're to be healthy by just keep moving, right? Amen. Just keep moving. And so the Lord wants us to celebrate this unity. Look for what you have in common. Now, there are people in this room born in different countries, uh, different circumstances for sure. We are all so different. But what brings us together? The Lord. Yeah. It's one word. Amen. What is it? Joy. It's Jesus. He brings us together. Yes. He's the reason that we're here. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't even know each other. Amen. We wouldn't even care. Amen. But Jesus Christ is our unity. Yes. You know, if you love Him, and I love Him, we have a lot in common. That's right. And if you love Jesus and I love Jesus, we're going to be in a place forever and ever and ever together. Amen. You know what makes it so frustrating in this world? Is we just meet with people and we talk with people, but oh, we gotta get going, we gotta run. Right? We're all you know stressed and we all have these schedules. Well, I don't think when it comes to eternity, we're gonna look at a watch and say, you know, it's been about two thousand years of living eternity. I think we better move on. Eternity is eternity. And we have Jesus in common. So we can really get to know each other a lot more there than here. Man, I'm looking forward to that. So look at what you have in common. And then build others up. <clears throat> build them up. Our body, the different parts, are for the whole. Yesterday I was riding my bicycle. Beautiful day yesterday, wasn't it? Amen. I'm riding down Martin Luther King Drive, and all of a sudden I feel like, what? I got I have a bloody nose. So I didn't just like keep riding with a bloody nose. My hand took care of my bloody nose. Aren't you glad that the hand and the nose can work together? It's, it's a wonderful thing. My hand built up my nose. So we build each other up. There are, there are people in the body of Christ that have a special gift for this. They just look for you doing something right. And they say it. You ever know people that are always looking for something wrong? Amen. And they say it? Amen. I had a coach like that in Little League. Hmm. You know, I mean, good friends of our family. Maybe that's why he was so hard on me. But every little thing that I did wrong, he just, ah! It's like, that's all I can remember. Him just being a mean, mean person. And as a result, I hated it. I hated even going to the baseball practice. And I, I was pretty lousy at it because I never got good because I, I was always intimidated. Like, the coach was going to holler at me. So I was like, hmm. look for somebody doing something right and say something. Amen. Thank you. Paul said in the Word of God, he said, that God has given me authority to build you up, right. not to tear you down. That's right. That's right. So build each other up. <laughs> I had a chance to speak to some police officers this week, probably about seven of them. And they were in a line. They were out, ready to go out on the street. And I told them, I said, I read something from Romans. But I said, if you get up every morning and you have the attitude, what can I say with my mouth that can build somebody up? Or what can I do that can help somebody? You're going to have a good day. Amen. You don't have to be a victim of your day, even if circumstances are real bad. If you look to build somebody up, you can be... Yeah. All right. Read it with me, okay? So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. If you want to have a sticky spirit where gifts stick to you, then I recommend this. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord, give me those things in my life that are going to build up the body of Christ. Because God live, loves to give gifts to people that they're going to share with others. Amen. He doesn't ever give a gift that's just for us. Amen. You know, I think I shared this last week. Children oftentimes, when you give them a gift, they often like to just pull themselves away and say, nobody else plays except me. <laughs> but as we get older, hopefully, uh, we learn that the most fun in life is sharing what we have with others. Yeah. So 
So that's the most fun we can have when all the members belong to each other. Here's the last thing I want to share with you about how to have a healthy body. I'm not talking about believers in Jesus. And how we are to be able to receive God's gifts to us is by being willing to share them with others. Yeah. Now, the reason this is so important is because God wants us to have the attitude that says, I live so that your kingdom can grow. Amen. That's, how, that's the attitude that He wants to have us have. Amen. And so, whatever we do, we're saying to ourselves, God, I'm kingdom-minded. I'm kingdom-minded. I want to do those things that are going to edify the whole body. That's why we have to be careful. We have to be sensitive to other people. As an associate pastor at a church, uh, it was probably about 500 people, and uh, the pastor came to me and, and said, you know, I, I noticed that this person, we all won't say his name, but this person is down front, and whenever we worship or maybe come to the altar, this person had a way of like shaking violently. Now, I don't have a problem with people shaking or responding to God, but the problem in the service was this, that whenever he would come to the altar and he'd shake so violently, other people around would think he was having a seizure. And so they wouldn't even worship, they'd just look at this guy, especially if they were new. They would look at him and they would look at me, turn it all 911, look at him. And so the pastor asked me to go to this guy to address this. And I said, you know, to him, I said, you know, we love you and we appreciate you and we're so glad you're reaching out to God, but would you be able to control your shaking? At first he said no, but we knew that he could. Come on, man, you could do this. You could do this. Amen. And so it wasn't as if we were saying, well, don't respond to the Holy Spirit. No, but you don't want to do those things that are going to take and distract people away from Jesus to you. And he, he was okay with that. He grew in the Lord. Okay? We didn't have to call 911. So praise God. It's because he was humble and he was teachable. Someone else would have said, well, you don't want me around here. You don't appreciate my shaking. But we serve. We share with others. And we help others. Now, the Bible mentions gifts. I want to go through them really quickly. And I want to see if you see yourself in any of these gifts. All right? Here's some. This is not an exhaustive list. There are all kinds of gifts. But prophesy. Okay? The Bible says, let the person use it in proportion to his faith. So, do you have a gift of prophecy? Maybe you do and you don't know it. Amen. You know what a gift of prophecy is? It's not being able to say, this is who's going to win the presidential election. <laughs> but the prophecy, I guess. We're not going to go there, by the way. <laughs> but prophecy, prophecy is anointed speech. Amen. Put it this way. It's speaking under the influence. Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. Some of you probably have been arrested out there, right, for driving under the influence? <laughs> this is speaking under the influence. This is like being so filled with God that the words that you say is going to be like, Wow, the right word at the right time for somebody. Amen. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. That's right. Yes. You don't have to have a you know as many degrees as a thermometer. You can go ahead and just speak right. words that are from God that help people. Amen. You can do that. Maybe God is giving you a gift of prophecy. I think that people that get up front and talk need to have the gift of prophecy. Amen. Yes, Lord. Right? They need to. If not, we need to pray that they would. Yeah. Because we want to hear a word from God. Yeah. And we can hear a word from God from each other as well. Yeah. From you. Here's another gift. Serving. Yeah. Now, we're all called to serve, right? Every one of us is called to serve. But there are some people who are just mega servers. Mm -hmm. I mean, think Scooter and think Harley Davidson. Okay? Some people just, 
you're serving all the time. For you know, I just think of you as a, having the gift of serving. You know, there's other people in the body. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, too this, late. serving. <laughs> too late. She's there. She's sweating under the hot light. <laughs> So if you want to have a gift of serving, then you serve. Amen. You don't even wait. If you see trash on the floor, or yeah. you pick it up. Amen. You're walking down the sidewalk and there's tra trash there by the church, you pick it up. Yes. That's what a servant does. A servant just loves to serve. Even if nobody in the world sees, yes. but the little bird in the tree. Amen. It's okay. Do Ooh. it. Teaching. Let them teach. Amen. I used to think that people that would be like really quiet and they're into books all the time, I say, they're, they're quite weird. They're just nerds. But we need quiet people in books mm -hmm. that can share insightful things to us. Yes. Right? Yes. For many years of my life, I became one of those quiet nerds. <laughs> They're trying to study and prepare. Because I felt going into the ministry as a pastor was just as important as a doctor studying for being a yes. right? MD. Yes. That's why I study as I have. Not that I have... You know, I have so much more to learn. But the fact is, is that if you're going to be a teacher, you need to learn. Amen. But let them teach. Ooh. We have teachers in our, you know, congregation. Thank God. I think of Otis as a teacher. Of he loves That's the right. Word. He yeah. teaches That's the right. Word. Right. Does a great men's Bible study. Amen. Amen. Commercial, commercial. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Encouraging. Okay. If you have a gift of encouragement, then exercise it. There's all these people, God has been so faithful, there's all these people in the churches where I pastored, people that have the gift of encouragement. They are the kind of people, it's like, I think of them as hot tub people. You ever go to just a hot tub and you just feel warm and relaxed? Mm -hmm. Some people are like that. You're around them and they have the gift of encouragement and you always feel warm and relaxed around them. Amen. We have people like that in our church. You know that? The Amen. last name begins with woman. <laughs> yes. People that just have a gift yes. right. of making you feel loved and accepted. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we all need to encourage, but we can also pray, God, give me the gift of encouragement. Yes. Thank you. It doesn't mean you don't ever say something that needs to be corrected in somebody's life. It's just that you love people enough to say something. Yes. You know what we do, don't you? So oftentimes. We see somebody doing something, and we think, we think, oh, that's really a nice thing. But we never say anything. Mm -hmm. An encourager says something. Yes, yes. Because words are powerful. Yes. Proverbs tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so when you say a life-giving word to someone, that hurts their spirit up. That helps them. So say something. Yes. If you love someone, say it. I grew up in a family where it was so hard to express emotions. I mean, so difficult. I think I heard my mother say that she loved me maybe twice in my whole life, and my dad never. You know, our idea was of a hug was something like this. Look, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, barely touch. Yeah, whatever you call it, a teepee hug or whatever. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but as I married into the family I'm in with the, my wife's uh, maiden name is Hafner, they were like hugging Velcro people. <laughs> <laughs> they hug you and they won't leave. I got to do so good. I So I appreciate my Velcro family. <laughs> ourselves, you know what, I just can't afford to give anything to anybody. And we make a little bit more money and instead of like sharing that, we end up getting something more expensive in our life, maybe higher monthly 
payments on cars or rents. Or we, see, we tend to push our level of living up to and beyond where we live. So we hardly have ever anything to give. So the people that I know that are givers have learned that just because God gives them more money, they don't need to spend more money Amen. on themselves. Amen. But they have the joy of using that money to bless other people. Amen. 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 It is a blast Amen. to give money away. Amen. And so, God knows. I mean, I pray this prayer. I say, God, would you give me more money? Amen. I don't want to give more money. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't want just more money so I can get a new car. No, no, I want. <coughs> it is so stinking fun to give money. Amen. That's right. Didn't Jesus say that? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It is more blessed to yeah. than it is to receive. Leadership. Let him govern. Give, yeah. Let him govern diligently. So a leader is a person who is responsible, who really gets in there like Daniel. The Bible says he was neither corrupt nor negligent, but he was a great leader. Amen. And then the last one is showing mercy. Showing mercy. Now, can you show mercy? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. If somebody's done something to you in the past, can you show mercy? Amen. Amen. Can you actually do something nice to that person that's done something to you that's bad? Amen. You can do that because that's what Jesus gives us the love to be able to do that. Amen. I'll close uh, with this thought. <clears throat> well, a couple thoughts. I don't want to lie to you. Um, <laughs> I saw something the other day that it just like brought me to tears. I mean, it was just so powerful. We were at the Love in Action. Uh, it was at City Hall. At least a couple hundred people there in line, you know, just chatting with them and they're receiving uh, food and blessing. I had the opportunity to preach to them as well beforehand. Yeah. So I had this uh, microphone and I'm up on City Hall and on the steps and looking over the city. I felt like I was preaching to the city. But anyway, later on, uh, this this guy who doesn't, he's homeless, he, he kind of pointed to me and said, look over there. And I saw one of the workers, I'm one of the workers too. I saw one of the workers, a young lady, she probably in her maybe 20s. And I saw her, I looked over there, I saw her, she was in stocking feet. And she was talking to another lady, and the lady like, was really smiling, she was looking down at her feet, she had these new boots on. I said, what? <laughs> so I went over to her, I said, what just happened here? And she says, well, you know, we were talking, we realized that we're the same size feet, and her shoes were not that good, and so I had some really nice boots, and so I just took my boots off and I gave them to her. Amen. Thank you. Yes. That was like me seeing Jesus in action. Yes. Right? Wow. Oh, that impressed me. She didn't do that to impress anybody. She just did that. Amen. So showing mercy, you know, just doing things for people that will show the love of Jesus is an awesome thing. I, uh, I'll just tell you this quick story and I'm done. As a kid, uh, I, th I thought someone said, oh, good? I said, you know, it's good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't rush, that's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Shut this program down. <laughs> when I was 17 years old, I had a lot of back problems because mm -hmm. I worked with my dad and he made me carry heavy stuff, you know. Well, don't, don't be the violin out. It was okay. He paid me. But I carried every step. I threw my back out. And I had this chronic back pain for years. It would kind of go in and out, in and out. And so, someone told me something one time. And they said, you know, if you will do certain exercises to strengthen your muscles and your stomach, it will really help your back. I said, oh, what have I got to lose? So I did these, you know, these stupid looking crunchies or whatever they were. And so... As a result, I had very, very few back problems. Because I discovered that the back all by itself doesn't do a great job. But it's the muscles around the back that strengthen it. And I said, there's a lesson there. You know, we need each other. I'm not, I'm not in this all by myself. Okay? I need other people. You need other people. Let's stay with each other. Yes. 
Let's devote ourselves to Jesus and walk with each other. Thank you. How's that sound? Sounds good. Sounds good? Yes.